I didn't expect to find a place like this in Seminyak, but I'm getting ahead of myself. First, I had to get here. Hey, this is JR, aka The Tourist. I'm in Bali and heading to Seminyak. If you're wondering if Seminyak is the right place for you on your next visit to Bali, stay with me a few minutes and I'll show you how you might spend a day here. But here's the long story less long. If you want shopping, food, nightlife, then a stop in Seminyak is a good choice. Plus, there are the beach clubs. However, if you're coming to Bali purely for nature and relaxation, feel free to skip Seminyak for Ubud or the northeast of the island and consider some place like Uluwatu or Nusa Dua for your beach time. With that out of the way, let's talk Turkey. By air, you arrive Bali at Denpasar Airport. It's about 12 kilometers to the center of Seminyak. Not far as the crow flies, but the crow doesn't have to worry about Bali's notorious traffic. I arranged for a pickup before I arrived, and I suggest you do so as well. As for accommodations, you'll find all the options in Seminyak. There are full-service beach resorts and lots of smaller boutique hotels. I've stayed at the Alila Seminyak, and I would recommend, but the beaches in Seminyak require further explanation. So consider saving your resort budget for another part of the trip. Me, I've opted for a small private villa. Hey, so it's morning. I'm in my villa in Seminyak, the place that I'm staying. Got in last night. Had a car pick us up at the airport. If you're coming to Bali, it's a good thing to arrange transport prior. There's gonna be a lot of people coming at you and asking you if you want taxis, and I'm sure most of them are, are honest for the most part, but there's something very just easy about coming out and meeting someone who's there specifically to pick you up. One less thing to think about. Ultimately, I think you can find the Bluebird taxis. Bluebird taxis in Bali and in Indonesia generally are very trustworthy. We arrived at the villa late night and pretty much just went to bed. We did see a little bit of the place. Obviously, we saw the place last night, but there's something nice about waking up and seeing a place for the first time. I'll, I'll show you around. It's pretty simple, but it's, it's pretty nice. It's got a pool, a yard area as well. I like it. It does the trick. It's a nice place to, to lounge around, which I think we'll be doing a bit of over the next couple of days. I'm not normally a big breakfast person, but I woke up that first morning feeling hungry. I wondered for a moment whether there was a way to arrange one of those floating breakfasts here in the pool. But then I remembered, that shit is stupid. Why would I want to eat a meal standing waist deep in water? I'm not a bear. I prefer eating at a table, not wading into a river to try and catch salmon swimming upstream. With that in mind, let's go venture out and find some breakfast. Cafe culture is alive and well in Bali. I credit Australians. Yes, there's bogans creeping up from Kuta, but thanks to the Aussies, you'll be able to find pretty plates of good food. So if you're a fan of fruit-laden acai bowls and fluffy pancakes and wobbly poached eggs perched atop picture-perfect avocado toast, you'll dig this part of Bali. As I said, most days I'm not looking for a big breakfast, but instead for a good cup of coffee. You'll find that here in Seminyak as well. There's plenty of good specialty coffee shops around. This place, Cafe Fora, made a damn good cappuccino. And the big picture window at the front of the shop was a nice place to watch the world go by. Right now is a good place to come out and say that Seminyak isn't exactly an untouched tropical paradise. It's built up, and not necessarily in the nicest way. That said, built up has its advantages, like shopping. Seminyak probably has the best shopping on the island. Here on Jalan Kair are two shopping centers side by side. There's Seminyak Village, which is a two-story mall, and Seminyak Square, which is a strip mall with a 
row of stalls out front. There's also a good sized flea market up the road. Note that there's a good warung specializing in pork ribs right next to the flea market. Back to retail, there are plenty of smaller shops and boutiques to be found around town. If shopping isn't your thing, consider trying out one of the many spas in the area. You'll find services at a variety of price points, but do be wary of the very cheap options with the very pushy ladies mingling out front. Seminyak sits on Bali's west coast. It's right on the beach. Opinions on these beaches vary, so you should know what to expect. Large stretches of wide, flat beach and calm waves. Seminyak's beaches are great for running or strolling, for dipping your toes in the cool water, or for enjoying a sunset beer at one of the many beach bars. However, you won't find curved, picturesque patches of white sand surrounded by swaying palm trees. If you're looking for the latter, you'll have to go elsewhere on the island. The calm waves do make Seminyak a good place for surfing lessons. You'll find lots of places renting boards and giving lessons. One of the best ways to enjoy the coast here is at a beach club. Think of a nice resort without the rooms. One of the most popular is Potato Head. You could do worse than spending your afternoon into evening lounging around its infinity edge pool, ordering drinks and vibing to the music. Potato Head has an Indonesian restaurant perched up on the upper floor, which is where I had dinner. There's definitely cheaper and maybe more authentic Indonesian and Balinese food to be found at many of the local warungs, but this did the trick. And it was a great spot from which to watch the sunset over the Indian Ocean. Another popular beach club option is Kudata, which has less of a party vibe and is a good place for a family dinner. You can spend your evenings at a beach club, but Seminyak has a lot more to offer in the way of nightlife. Kuta, south of here, was the original Bali nightlife destination. Over time, the scene migrated north, up to Seminyak, and lately, further north to Changu. Despite the slow migration northward, Seminyak remains great for nightlife. Motel Mexicolo was hopping on this night, some other popular places include La Favela and Shishi Nightclub. Another place worth checking out is Shooter's Bali, which is an adult amusement park with mini golf, beer pong, and axe throwing. Seminyak's nightlife is tilted decidedly towards a younger demographic. If you're of a certain age, like myself, you may want to check out some of the quieter spots. I'm a fan of cocktail bars and Seminyak has a few good ones. For instance, there's the Shady Flamingo. For craft beer, check out Beer & Co. And lastly, I'll bring you back to the spot where I started the video, 40 Thieves, which is hidden upstairs from this ramen shop. To get in, you'll have to find the secret entrance in the back. The place was pretty quiet on this night, but the bar staff were super friendly and there was a surprisingly soulful band who started playing. All in all, a fantastic atmosphere in which to enjoy a tasty beverage. This is as good a place as any to end the video. That's a day in Seminyak. If you've enjoyed the video or found it helpful, 
please do hit the like button and let the YouTube algorithm know. Thank you for sticking around until the end. Stay tuned for future destination guides and more.